Hey, when your customer pulls into your shop with the door covered in plastic and duct tape, pretty good bet he's got a problem with his power window system. Now, the first power windows were simply a motor driven by a hardwired switch, very easy to troubleshoot, but today's cars often use uh, switches that are merely inputs for a dedicated control module or a body control module that's really in charge of operating the windows. Performing the wrong tests in the wrong way on those systems can cause a lot more problems than the car originally came in with. Hey, I'm Pete Meyer, technical editor for Motor Age Magazine. Welcome to another edition of The Trainer. As with any diagnosis, the first step is to verify the problem. I've had more than one power window complaint that turned out to be nothing more than the driver accidentally locking out the passenger switches from his own master switch. Listen while you operate the affected window. Can you hear the motor running? If so, suspect a problem with the window regulator, the component that actually provides the up and down movement for the glass. Many cars today use cable driven systems and the cables can break or jump off their guides. You'll hear the cable crackling inside the door in many instances of cable failure. Look at the interior dome lights while you operate the window. Does the light dim when the motor is operated? This can indicate a mechanical issue with the window rather than an electrical one. An electric motor that has to work too hard draws more current and that draws more in the battery, dimming the lights. The extra work can be a window that can't move smoothly or more likely a window motor that is just worn and binding internally. Feel the window itself. Can you move it manually? Slack in the window can indicate a damaged regulator assembly. Once you've completed your initial inspection, you'll want to go to your service information system and pull the schematics of the specific vehicle that you're working on. Are the door switches hardwired to the motor or are they simply an input to an electronic control module? You'll also want to know if there's any special reset or recalibration procedures to be aware of once you've completed your repair. Once you have the information on how it's wired and how it works, the next step is to remove the door panel and the water or soundproofing to access the motor. Read up on how the panel is attached to avoid damaging it during removal. With the trim panel removed, access the window motor's electrical connector. If there are more than two wires, suspect some type of position sensor or intelligent processor to be included in the motor assembly. You'll want to make sure you know if there's any reset procedures that will need to be performed after you button it all back together. Motor function, whether hardwired or computer controlled, is simple enough. Power is sent in one side and out the other for down, then the path or current is reversed to make the window motor turn in the opposite direction and put the window back up. To quickly determine if the electrical fault is in the motor or in the control circuit, plug in a test light using connector ends that are appropriate for the car's wiring harness. Then operate the switch in both directions and look for the light to come on brightly. If so, the motor itself is likely bad and needs to be replaced. If the bulb fails to light, then you'll need to isolate whether it's the power side that's missing or the ground side. A few standard tests should help you isolate where the problem lies. With the motor plugged in to load the circuit, measure the voltage and ground at the connector with the switch first in one position and then the other. Remember, reversing the current flow is what changes the motor's direction. You should see the same when you're testing at the connector. One terminal will have power and the other ground, then the two should reverse when the switch is moved to the opposite position. Isolating the problem is not too difficult on systems where the switches are actually wired directly to the motor. Voltage drop testing will lead you to the cause should any of these measurements be wrong. And we have lots of resources on voltage drop testing in the AutoPro workshop. 
Simply log on to motorrace.com and search the keyword voltage drop. Here are a few common fault areas to keep in mind. Mechanical contacts and switches that are wired directly are prone to failure because of the current arcing across them, and wiring is often damaged or broken where the harness leaves the door and enters the cabin. You know, sometimes those door switches aren't really switches, they're input devices, and they go to a dedicated control module that actually operates the windows. Now that control module may be incorporated in the switch assembly, it may be a separate dedicated unit, may even be incorporated to an existing module, typically a body control module. But to service those, to troubleshoot those, you're gonna need a scan tool and you're gonna need one that has enhanced capability. In other words, it has to be able to access those modules, read the data PIDs that are associated with that system, switch states and so forth, and even offer bi-directional controls so that you can do a complete test and isolate where the problem lies. Of course, once you know that it's in the circuit, you can use your voltage drop testing to nail it down and repair it. Now, when you finished your repair, you may have to go in and either reset or recalibrate the system to restore all of the power window functions. That includes the automatic up, down, and anti-jam features. You can find the information in your factory service information system, but if that fails, you can access any of the factory OE sites, some with a fee, at oem1stop.com. That's all the time we've got for this edition of The Trainer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next month.